On today's Locked On Jayhawks, we're joined by Jason Jordan as we're going to go over the KU basketball recruiting class for the class of 2023. You are Locked On Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Derek Johnson. You can hear me as well on Rock Chalk Sports Talk on KLWN in Lawrence from 3 to 6, Monday through Friday here on Locked on Jayhawks. Thanks for making LOJ your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on today's edition, you can see him next to me if you're watching on YouTube. Jason Jordan joins us from the show from Sports Illustrated. We're going to break down the class of 2023 for the Kansas basketball team. Obviously, on bye week for football, basketball season starts up next week. So no better time to, to do this right now. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Underdog. Sign up on underdogfantasy.com with the promo code Locked On and get your first deposit doubled up to $100. So, Jason, appreciate the time coming on here today. KU already has three commits for the class of 2023. Chris Johnson, Jamari McDowell, Elmarco Jackson, and uh, I, I guess we'll just start and, and break each one of these down individually. Let's start with Chris Johnson. He was the first one to commit for the class of 2023. What is KU getting? What is the scouting report on Johnson? Well, he's a first and foremost uh, playmaker and a crafty ball handler, um, which makes him a great playmaker. But he's also an efficient scorer in his own right. Um, so he's a guy who definitely will hunt his own shot. But <laughs> I think he's an underrated playmaker um, just because – you know, he has, he's a high IQ guy. So he's a guy who's going to make winning plays, going to make the extra pass, um, doesn't force it. So he's not going to be a guy who's going to have a lot of, a great deal of turnovers. And he plays in an amazing system at Montford under Kevin Boyle, who is potentially the best, probably let's just go and say he's probably the best coach in high school basketball. Um, so he's gonna, you know, absorb a lot of that. A lot of his players come in, uh, ready to go from day one, but you know, um Chris is a guy who's also a defensive hound you know a lot of people don't talk about that like he brings a lot of uh energy on both ends of the floor so he's not just a guy who rest, you know a lot of a lot of elite guys rest on defense um more more do than don't if we're being very honest but he's not a guy who rests on defense so he's a guy who checks off a lot of boxes great size for a combo guard at six four six five and very very confident which is one of the things I really like about him um, I like a cocky player on the court. You know, I like a play, player who plays with that type of edge, and he definitely has that going for him, for sure. Well, he was a guy who was, I don't know, dropped like a little bit in some of the different recruiting rankings, maybe 10 spots or so, but it sounds like he's had a, a good start to his senior year. Do you know how that's going so far for Johnson? Yeah, well, I mean, at, at Mount Vernon, you're going to be a part of a system, right? So you're going to have to fill a role, and I think his role is being a playmaker and a guy who, Uh, gets downhill and scores the ball. Um, But, you know, they're not lacking for scores there. So you got to get in where you fit in. And that's where he's also, um, you know, going to contribute there um, as a defensive hound, like I was talking about. So he brings energy on both ends of the floor. And he has um, done very well in their preseason games. And, um, you know, that's why they're ranked number one in our Power 25. I think, you know, they could potentially win their seventh national title. Jamari McDowell was the second commit for KU. What is KU getting in McDowell? Like a utility guy. So he's a 6'5 athlete, but he can play one through three. Um, But I think where he's really going to earn time is his ability to defend. Like He's 6'5, but I think he has like a 6'8, 6'9 wingspan. And he uses that um, amazingly well. Uh, He did this summer, did uh, very well with the Houston Defenders. Um, and he plays passing lanes like a, uh, a veteran defensive back, right? So his length, um, is what really enables him to be a a lockdown defender. I think he could definitely carry that over, um, in year one, I think he could really contribute on the defensive end in year one. But, you know, when we talk about how great a guy is, I always say this, I always have to make this stipulation. <clears throat> so he's he's gifted offensively, too, because when we talk about defense and the first thing we lead with is defense, they're like, oh, he, he must really be bad on the offensive. It must be a project. But Jamari's definitely not a project. I mean, I think he's going to earn time in that rotation first because of his ability to defend and his ability to play passing lanes. But, I mean, you know, he's a capable scorer as well on all three levels. 
um, you know, not the most dominant scorer in the class, but definitely capable, definitely a guy who gets downhill and gets to his spots and finishes plays, plays above the rim. So um, uh, definitely a guy who thrives in athletic finishes too. His, his layup package is amazing. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's the thing now, but it's true. Like he, he's, he's crafty and able to make unorthodox shots. So um, that's how he's going to contribute there. In yeah, I think class. we saw that. Uh, we saw that a lot with Christian Brown this last year and how useful yeah. that can be, especially when you get out in transition. Oh, yeah. uh, Absolutely. The, the the last guy here was the most recent commit just, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, El Marco Jackson, who's also the highest rated recruit, kind of depending where you look and whatnot, uh, where he comes in, whether it's top 25, top 20 or whatnot. Uh, what is Kansas getting with El Marco? Well, a winner, high IQ guy. He's actually the guy who sent his boys, Chris and uh, uh, Jamari home in the UAA finals, dropped 26 on him. Uh, so he, he had a big summer. I was watching him a bunch of times in the UAA. Um, but you know, a heady point guard, he really dictates pace very well. That's one of the things that really stands out. About most guys are really good in – most point guards are really good in transition. And, you know, when it gets to having to slow it down and they have to think the game through, it's kind of like, oh, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. But, <laughs> but he can play at two speeds, right? So he can really run the show on the offensive end. He can take his cues from the sideline. And he can play off his instincts. So he's a high IQ guy. Um, efficient scorer in his own right. So when he decides to score and, you know, that – that, you know, comes often. Like I said, he had 26 against your against his future teammates. Um, he's able to do that. He gets to his points on the court. I haven't seen guys that have been able to stay in front of him. When I watched him this summer, he was getting by whoever, whenever. And um, but he does, he's not always looking to score. I would say that he's looking to make plays, make the winning play first before he's looking to score. So, I, you know, I wouldn't exactly call him a pass first point guard but a guy who's always going to make the right play, um, whether that's pulling up for the floater, uh, going on in and uh, absorbing contact and finishing through that, or making the kick out play, getting a touch of the paint and kicking out, um, or, you know, creating off the um, high pick and roll or the high screen and roll and, you know, uh, um, pick and pop. He's, he's great. It just, he's great vision all over the court, all over the court, but, the biggest thing about him is the way he's able to dictate the pace of the game. And he's a hound on the defensive end too. So he guards 94 feet. So that's why he's so highly rated because um, he's probably one of the best two way point guards in the class. Uh, as far as, you know, how long you envision these guys being in school, obviously you never really know getting into the mind of the players of what ideally they're trying to do or whatnot. But uh, how do you envision the, the college careers going for those three commits? Yeah, I don't. I mean, right now, today, I don't say I'll uh, enjoy them for nine months. Not, not with this group. Like, it, you know, so they're, it's a good, good, a really strong group, you know. But then you guys, last year, you had MJ Rice and, uh, you know, those got three McDonald's All Americans. I don't think you have that this year, right? If I'm being very honest. But you have a really good group. Um, and, you know, sometimes you get a little spoiled, especially you guys. <laughs> You get a little spoiled because it's like, oh, man, how many guys are we going to see in the McDonald's game? And, and that's not that's not the litmus test. I mean, go look at NBA rosters, you know, and you probably won't see a whole lot of McDonald's All-Americans, uh, but you can't go in the G League and find them. So just throw that out there. But um, these guys are guys that are going to, you know, stay for multiple years. And, you know, I think they they, you know, have they're definitely going to be fan favorites. Right. Because these guys are workhorses and they're playmakers. And they're guys who checks off who check off a lot of boxes, and they're guys who are going to help you win. You know, so you want that extra title, want another title. You know, you want to feel how you felt. This is that's how you won this year. Like this, let's be very clear. That's how you won. You had um, guys who were contributing over the course of their careers, and so um, that's what you're getting in these three guys. They'll be there for a while, but uh, all four, maybe not one. I don't see that, but they're going to be guys who are going to help you win for sure. I want to talk some of the the theme stuff overall of the recruiting class here in just a moment. But first, this episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to spice up the college football season. It's easy to sign up and it's super easy to play with a few taps of buttons on the app. Plus, it's super easy to navigate with well-organized out games and player props or even drafts. No KU game this week, no Chiefs game this week, so we'll do some World Series picks. Bryce Harper over one and a half total bases. He's on a heater. Justin Verlander over 32 and a half fantasy points. Seems easy there. He goes six and a third, gives up three runs with seven strikeouts. 
you're, you're still getting the, the win there. And then Jordan Alvarez, who's been amazing, over one and a half hits plus runs plus RBIs. That pays off six to one. You can make your picks just like I did or copy that. It's easy to play and available in over 30 states, including Kansas. Sign up with promo code Locked On. That's all one word, Locked On. And Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. Deposit $100, get $100 free. Go to underdogfantasy.com or find the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store or Play Store today. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code Locked On. Get in on the sports and college football pick em action today. Uh, so something you know that is kind of seems to be a, a theme to me with these recruits is um, – maybe you have a little bit more questions about the shooting overall with the three guys. Is there any worry for you about all these guys coming in? And and like, I think of, you know, KU having Dewan Harris back at point guard. Uh, he could still be back for next year as well as another year after that. And he's a guy who can make open shots, but he's not someone you're drawn up plays for. He's not someone who is, you know, catching and um, shooting around a screen or something like that. Would you have any concerns about maybe the shooting there or the pairing between possibly El Marco Jackson and Dewan Harris? No, um, you know I think Chris Johnson uh, definitely. Could, I mean, he's not a he's not a. It, a lot of times we you label shooters as shooters, and then and then in our mind, even subconsciously, we're like, and that's all they can do, you know. <laughs> like, but that's not the that's like a that's not like a new age combo guard. Like Chris Johnson can definitely knock down threes, but. He's at his best when he's got the ball in his hands creating. But if you want to get a piece of the paint and kick out, he's definitely a guy that can knock that shot down. So um, I think Chris is that is potentially a guy you could draw up plays for to um, you know get his shots off. And El Marco, no, I don't think I think they can coexist because at the end of the day, they're playmakers. And if you look at the recipe for success, look at Baylor, look at Kansas, look at you guys last year. You flood the court. I say this all the time. You have to flood the court with playmakers. And, you know, the biggest thing with that is buying into the role, right? And, you know, uh, talking about Texas, Tyrese Hunter, Marcus Carr, you know, I've talked about them uh, last week and uh, they were a lot of big questions about can they coexist. But the reality is um, they both they both have a chemistry and they both understand their role. So that's the biggest thing, right? Yes. Can can they go to so the short answer? Is yes, they can coexist. The bigger answer is. Do they have that chemistry? Do they have that gel? And can they accept their roles? And, you know, at, at the end of the day, do they like each other? If they like each other, more times than not, it's not going to matter who has the ball in their hands. They're going to play off. Uh, I like the idea of flooding the court with potentially, specifically at the guard position, playmakers. But, you know, the, the recipe now is playmakers, long, athletic, rim runners, who are also playmakers. Um, but, yes, to answer, the short answer is, Absolutely, those guys can coexist. Well, and what you mentioned with KU winning the title last year, not having a bunch of you know five star guys, high end four star guys who maybe stuck around for a while, and when you see them already having three commits, and and like you said, maybe uh, outside of El Marco, the other two might not be McDonald's All Americans, and um, you know you see something where it seems like kind of the common theme between these three players is guys who can play kind of multi-versatility yeah. where you can play maybe as the one, the two, or the three between the different positions that give you kind of a switchable team and whatnot. Do you read anything into the theme of this class and, and what Kansas has done lately into maybe what they are trying to do moving forward? Yeah, well, I mean, it's what you said. I mean, it's literally flooding the court with playmakers. I mean, you know, all these guys, uh, you know, Jamari 6'5", Chris is 6'5". Marker's like six four or six three. Um, you know, great size for their position. Um, but they all have the ability to, to create plays. They all can grab the rebound and go. They can all they can all be the outlet pass, right? And that's what it is. They can all be the outlet pass and they can all fill lanes. I mean, you look at Alabama, look at what they do. A lot of people want to play quick, like they maybe not shoot as much as <laughs> as quick and as much as they do, but um you know, and I know Kansas has a system. I know they have to, they, you know, people talk about the number of passes they have to have and stuff like that. But um, when you have a court full of playmakers, that that just, you know, that coincides with what Bill Self clearly wants to do um, with getting the ball around, everybody touching the ball. So when and th when that's the focus, it's clear why he would take Jamari El Marco, Chris, because these guys, I mean, then you look at look at somebody like Chris. He's at Montbert, like we talked about. 
I mean, um, he has to share the ball. If he, it, you know, nobody at Mount Vernon is going to average 25. That's never going to happen. Not going to happen. You know, Kansas, when that, you're not going to average 25, you know, because you're going to come there and you're being a traveling all-star team. So you have to learn to share the ball. You have to be, you have to be a playmaker. And that's clear in this class and even in the 2022 class. Well, I do want to ask you about some of that 2022 class because we're about to start this next season and KU is going to be relying on a lot of those youngsters who were on that 2022 class and maybe didn't play a ton, played sparingly a season ago and they're looking for maybe breakouts there. And I think the most intrigue is going to be at the center position, whether it is the class of 2021 or the class of 2022. Zach Clements hoping for a year two breakout. Might be some hesitation there. Ernest Duday seems to have a high uh, ceiling there. Zuby Edgefer did some good work in, in some circuits prior to coming over. As you've kind of tracked along those guys with Edgefer, Uday, and Clements uh, along the way now coming to KU, what are kind of your thoughts on, on what KU could have at the center position this year? Oh, you got options, and that's that's the best thing about it, right? I mean, I, I really like um, Uday. I really like – I've always liked him. Right. I just I just like a guy who's a workhorse, checks off a lot of boxes, rim protector, um, great hands, you know, um, and, you know, Zach, Zach kind of fits the bill as well. But um, the biggest thing I would say is size um, and versatility. Right. And their their ability to rebound and especially Ernest, I, I, I you know, I think your best option is Ernest. At, at the center position. I've had this conversation last week just because he checks off a lot of different boxes. Um, and, you know, he's able to finish plays, plays above the rim. But, you know, a lot of guys, when we talk about fitting that mold, they're like, oh, he's a, again, like we said earlier, he's a workhorse. I, I had this conversation with uh, Montrez Harrell years ago and guys don't like to be the junkyard dog. But the reality is if that's who you are, you know, a lot of people make a lot of money filling their role and i think Ernest is a guy who is completely okay with filling his role he's not a guy who's out there trying to be a guard he's not a guy who's out there you know trying to work on a three-point shot i mean he he fits the bill in the paint and i think you know i think he's the best option um down there at the center position but you well, have options. but you have options yeah. Uh, grady dick isn't ranked in you know like the top 10 or anything wherever you look but if you if you just change up, because I know with a lot of the recruiting rankings, it's not just based on what are you going to do your first year of college. It's based on your basketball career. It's based on you know what you're going to do over the course of uh, a certain period of time. If you were just valuing the incoming freshman class from the class of 2022 for just impact as a true freshman in college basketball, around what range do you think Grady Dick would rank? Meaning in his class? Yes. Yeah, he definitely be when he would definitely be in the top ten. He would definitely be in the top ten. But honestly, and you know, I'm gonna go to another freshman. You guys, MJ Wright would be. He was seven for us, and but so the way we did it, more so, we weighed heavily. Where people like, oh, he could be a pro. But the reality, I'd hate when people listen. Most people don't realize the potential that you give them, and then we don't go back and say, hey, remember you said this is that and because we've moved on. It's been through three, four years, right? Nobody remembers that. I don't like that. So I think. My thing is, what'd you do? What did you do to, th to this year? What did you do, and who did you do against? Right. So if you look at some, look now, take that into consideration. Now you're ranking Rick Grady Dick in the top ten. Now you're ranking MJ Rice in the top ten. So, um, you know, I definitely think those guys are going to be super impact players for you. Um, I think a lot of people. I, it's wild how people discount MJ Rice. You know. Uh, I think you guys are going to love him. And I think he's going to be uh, a superstar for you guys this year. I got to talk to him uh, the other day at KU Men's Basketball Media Day. Loves to, he, he's a good singer. He uh, can sing some Alicia Keys songs. So, you know, he can get up there. So, we'll see what he can do on the basketball court as well. Um, as far as the, the rest of the class of 2023, um, I, I don't know if KU is, you know, full up right now. Technically, they'd be over scholarships at the moment for next year, but. They're going to lose players, whether it's into the NBA draft or, or the transfer portal or whatnot. Is there anyone out there in the class of 2023 that you see KU going hard after or that you see would maybe be a logical fit for Kansas? Uh, I mean, you know, they're in the mix with some guys. You know, I'm not, they're Kansas, as you well know, is probably uh, 
probably the biggest one he's there you guys are linked to in that class is Mikey Williams. Um, so, I mean, that would be interesting just because of what you already have, but we'll see. Um, I do think, and this is kind of, we talk about trends. Now the new trend for uh, coaches is to leave a couple spots for a transfer portal guy, just because that's because the world, that's the world we live in. That's what we That's what it is now. And, um, you know, I had so many guys, coaches at Peach Gym tell me, hey, man, you better tell these guys, man, ain't no more four and five man classes. You know, we got to leave spots for these transfers. And so um, that's just the reality of the situation. So um, to your point, you guys are going to lose players um, in the ways you say 100 percent. But um, I do think that every staff, every staff that I talk to is holding out spots for portal portal guys. Yeah, uh, I, I wonder with you brought up the name Mikey Williams. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much the El Marco Jackson commit maybe affects that as, as kind of being, I don't know, a potential lead guard, combo guard. Yeah. But how much on the recruiting circuit is that a conversation about? Because he has the the NIL deal with, I believe, Puma, right? And yeah. obviously there's no college basketball team that has Puma as their endorsement. So uh, what's kind of the conversation on the recruiting trail about that? Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of people think it's it's probably, I would say split down the middle. A lot of people think he'll never go to college. You know, I know that they're saying he will. A lot of, a lot of coaches out there are like, that kid's not going to college. Um, but then a lot, you know, he's taking visits. He's obviously came there, um, taking more visits. And, um, I think we'll know something, uh, before the season starts. Uh, that's what I've been told, but, um, we'll see, you know, the, the, you, <laughs> with this, uh, particular, uh, prospect things are are up in the air and there are a lot of different rumors you know when you it's the price of fame right he's probably the second most famous high school athlete in the or maybe third behind Archie but uh behind Bronny and Archie he's probably third maybe second he probably won't like that we said that but um you know <laughs> uh I, I think we could know something by December but then we might not know anything until April I you know it's a lot nothing is definitive with uh, Mikey's recruitment. I'll say that the best way. I can. Well, Jason, I appreciate the time, man. And uh, look forward to having you on again down the road, because obviously with KU basketball and recruiting, it, it is a uh, never sleeping cycle as I'm sure it is for you. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, man. That is uh, Jason Jordan joining us here on Locked on Jayhawks. I am Derek Johnson. That's going to do it for today's edition of the show here. On uh, Monday's show, we're going to look ahead to the week ahead with KU basketball and KU football both having a game next week. If you have anything you'd like for the show to talk about or want to follow along on the action, you can reach out at D Johnson Radio on Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to the show so you're getting all the latest with Locked on Jayhawks. That'll do it for today. Have a good rest of your day. I'll see you on me on Rock Chalk Sports Talk later. Adios.